Why, good afternoon there, you fine Stanford folk. This is week 10, our final week together, and we are talking about revision strategies. Uh, for some of you who are just kind of dipping your toe into the pool of writing a novel, a conversation on revision might seem a little bit premature, uh, but each author is going to have his or her own way of teaching revision. And I feel as though I would be remiss not to mention some revision strategies that have been really helpful for me in putting together my first few novels. So I thought I'd pass that stuff on uh, and see what helps you with your narrative. So first, uh, the main thesis of our entire class together has been this adage of liberating yourself from quality. Uh, trying to use that as some sort of creative license to let yourself write recklessly on the page. Uh, as I've advocated over the first nine weeks together, I want you to feel free. I want you to feel limber to express yourself creatively in whichever way your imagination wants to go. Uh, imagine yourself as being an improvising jazz musician, uh, wending and wending and meandering and having a great time uh, with not necessarily any sort of plan or schematic. Now what that does put pressure on is the revision process itself, because if you're going to feel that liberation up front, at some point you're going to have to go back with a more judicious, with a more fastidious or pragmatic eye and weigh the decisions that you made during that wanton rough draft and start to ask yourself if the decisions that you made early on uh, are working. So how are we going to go about doing that? The first thing I would advocate when you think you have draft one done and you're about to embark on draft two is to print the entire manuscript out. I know that we're ecologically conscious and that we want to do our best to save a tree or two and we'll make up for that in other ways. Uh, maybe scurry around your neighborhood and recycle a few extra bottles or cans that week. But trust me in that you'll want to actually have a hard copy of your book to read. For whatever reason, I'm sure you've had this experience too, it, it looks different uh, having a hard copy in your hands versus having it on the computer. Uh, once you print out the whole thing, do your best to read it in a compressed amount of time. If you can read the entire thing in a sitting or two, that would be ideal. Uh, but certainly don't let it stretch more than three or four days. Get your you know, literal red pen or your metaphorical red pen uh, and get ready to go through the draft very slowly and buckle up that this is going to be a rocky experience. Now one of the ways that we can take the power away or the authority away from things in life that scare us is because we expect them. So when we launch into the beginning of draft two, rather than seeing all the mistakes on the page and getting scared or fed up or to feel intimidated by the process of revision where we like run in our bedroom and pull the covers over our head, instead, we're ready for this. During draft one, we've embraced the liberate yourself from quality method. You've had fun, you've drafted recklessly. Um, and you knew that because you allowed yourself such latitude in draft one, that there was the, uh, not only the potential, but the likelihood that that meant that the draft that you produced was going to have a bunch of problems. And because we're ready for this, we are not scared by it. I think that bears repeating. Because we expected draft one to have problems, we are not intimidated to start draft two. So we print the whole beast out. We sit down, we read it, we mark the stuff that we think is really working, we mark the stuff that we're on the fence about, and then very hopefully, um, very judiciously, maybe even mercilessly, we're also able to go through and just hack away the stuff that we don't think uh, is working. So the first thing you'd want to do with draft two, print the whole thing out, read it as fast as you can, and take a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of notes. The next really important thing you want to do is you're probably going to have, and I'm making this number up, but let's say there's anywhere between 20 and 30 things that you see in that draft that you say, you know, I don't like this and I want to fix it. That's too many things to try to attack at once. 
Again, if we try to fix all 20 or 30 things at once, we might find ourselves in that same position again where we want to run into our bedroom, pull the covers over our head, and never get back to work on our book. There are so many smart people out there that have an abandoned draft of a novel on their C drive. Now we need to ask ourselves, how are we going to avoid being in that category of getting draft one or draft two finished and never seeing the book to the final place where it's ready to be published? How are we going to avoid that pitfall? And one thing we can do is we can sequester ourselves to certain aspects of craft on a draft by draft basis. This is something I do in every revision process I've ever embarked upon and it's really, really helped me. So I, I couldn't advocate for this strategy any more than I am. So for example, I finished draft one, I printed it out, I've read it, and I know that there are a lot of problems as I'm starting draft two, but the only thing I'm going to focus on is primary characterization. I'm going to do an entire draft that just focuses on primary characterization or whatever aspect of craft you'd like to. For example, you might say, you know what, I feel like I made a lot of character discoveries in draft one, but my plot is kind of boring, my plot's kind of herky-jerky, and I want to just spend an entire draft cleaning up my plot points or cleaning up the narrative conflict that I've established during draft one. That's fine. I'm not advocating for any particular element of craft. What I'm saying is trying to sit down and tackle 20 to 30 problems is putting an unrealistic artistic expectation on yourself. Whereas if you focused solely on primary characterizations or solely on finessing and smoothing out plot points, now that's something that we can tackle. That's a problem or a series of problems that we can identify and we feel confident that we're not going to like short circuit and malfunction our brain and run back into the bedroom and pull the comforter over our head. So again, not allowing all the problems to feel as though they need to be solved at once, but taking them on a piece by piece basis. Draft two might be character, draft three might be imagery, draft four might be setting, but breaking it into bite sized pieces so you continue to enjoy the revision process. Um, instead of abandoning the book and, and never seeing it to completion. The other thing that I really uh, advocate to do on every, as you begin every draft is to read the entire book aloud. Uh, this helps me with all issues of rhythm, issues of voice, issues of tone, all sorts of things. Uh, so once I print the whole thing out, I will read the whole book out loud to myself. Um, you know, this helps with all the, all the different cadences, all sorts of things that you might gloss over if you're reading silently to yourself. Once you hear them out loud, you'll say to yourself, that was a really bad sentence. I either need to fix that sentence or I need to cut that sentence. But reading everything out loud is something that has really helped me in the past. So as you start to get deeper into your draft one and start to think about what the next step or what the next phase might be, these are three really important things that I'd advocate. And again, one is to print the whole book out uh, and read a hard copy of it. The other is to read the book out loud to yourself. Um, this can be kind of make you uncomfortable. It can give you the heebie-jeebies to hear your own voice, reading your own words. But one of the things that writers do uh, is when we go on tour is that we have to perform sections from our books. So it's good to start to get in the habit, even as early as now, of breaking through some of those barriers of nerves or feeling intimidated to read your work aloud. So we print the whole thing out, we read it out loud to ourselves, and finally breaking the different elements of craft down into digestible bites on a draft by draft basis. Never allowing you to see so many problems at once that you feel as though uh, you can't overcome it or it feels like this insurmountable series of obstacles. Um, it should be exactly the opposite. You break it into little bites that you continue to feel momentum. You continue to feel like you're progressing in the book. That's where fun is going to come from. That's where we're going to be able to maintain that level of whimsy that's going to be so crucial if you're actually going to finish the book. Because the book isn't going to be done after draft two. The book's probably not going to be done after draft five. So the question becomes, how do you continue to imbue 
the process of rewriting the book with the same playfulness that we found at the beginning. Uh, how is it not going to seem like this overwhelming slog of tasks you don't want to do? Uh, and one way to do that is to break it into bites that aren't going to seem so intimidating. I actually really enjoy the revision process because it takes this really flawed book that I love and I slowly watch it improve little by little, piece by piece, until it's bound and placed on the shelf uh, for our readers to enjoy. And I'm hoping that you're able to find the same joy in your revision process. The best writers I know are the relaxed writers. The best writers I know are the ones that are able to have fun in their own work. And I hope over the 10 weeks that we've been together, I've been able to show that joy or show that playfulness to you in a classroom setting. And now that our time is winding down, I hope you're able to take that with you going forward. All of you are incredibly talented writers and the world should read your books. So finish that draft one, finish that draft two, work deeper and deeper into the revision process. And I can't wait to spend the $25 or $30 to experience your novels when they're ready to hit the shelves. Thanks and happy writing.